Ade Abiodun safely landed on planet Earth via Nigeria at his family's farming village of Araromi Abiodun. He was educated in Nigeria, the USA, and Canada. He obtained his PhD in 1971 in civil engineering from the University of Washington, Seattle, USA. And immediately thereafter, he joined the academic staff of the University of Ife, Uni Ife, Ile Ife, Nigeria, now called the Obafemi Awolowo University. After being away from Nigeria for almost nine years of education and acculturation in America, operating in his old but now new Nigerian environment with a commitment to be a fruitful academician became a challenge. Although he was appointed as a lecturer in civil engineering, he soon found out on his arrival at IFE that he would be placed in the Department of Agricultural Engineering in Uni IFE's Faculty of Technology. He carried out his teaching and research assignments, including publication of papers in scholarly journals and attended a number of national and international conferences that were germane to his profession. He took his students to see sites of professional relevance to their education, including a picturesque view of an ant hill on their way to the Amadubelo University in Zaria. He joined his two other academic colleagues to provide a number of professional services to the university particularly the establishment of the Department of Civil Engineering and its hydraulics laboratory and the servicing of its water supply system. That was also the time that the United States launched its first Earth observation satellite, Landsat-1, in July 1972. At that time, a large part of Africa, including Nigeria, was not covered by the existing Landsat ground receiving stations. Subsequently, on behalf of Nigeria, the incumbent Vice-Chancellor of UNIFE, Professor Hezekiah Oluwasomi, invited Ade and eight other members of the academic staff of UNIFE with education, training and experience in those areas of national development that could benefit from the data to be acquired by Landsat 2 to contribute to a proposal that Nigeria would later submit to the U.S. National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA. This was Ade's first direct involvement in a space technology activity. The proposal requested NASA to acquire Earth observation data of Nigeria for use in its national development agenda. Shortly thereafter, in early 1973, the United Nations Outer Space Affairs Division issued a global call for qualified candidates to apply for participation in an international course it was organizing in collaboration with CNES in France on remote sensing. All those associated with the drafting of the Nigerian proposal to NASA received a copy of this United Nations announcement. Ade's application was successful and he received an invitation to participate in the first United Nations Summer School on Remote Sensing Training course that was held in Tarap, France, from August 21 to September 21, 1973. He was also one of the 13 participants that the United Nations sponsored to this course. The UN course was very stimulating and encouraging and it offered the participants the opportunity to meet many people from different parts of the world. At the end of the course, Ade realized that he needed more knowledge in the field of remote sensing and the broad field of space science and technology if he were to be effective in applying it to address the several lingering development issues in Nigeria. Of particular interest were such areas as water resources, agricultural and food production, environmental degradation, including deforestation and soil erosion, telecommunications, tele-education, and tele-health. Ade subsequently went ahead and applied for and was awarded a National Research Council of Canada postdoctoral research fellowship that was tenable at the Canada Center for Remote Sensing, CCRS, in Ottawa, Canada, from December 1974 to February 1976. 
Ade's experience was a very rich and supportive one. On arrival at the CCRS, the management of the organization invited him for a discussion on his research agenda, associated costs, and the facilities that would be made available to him. He was given opportunities to participate in the other ongoing programs at CCRS, particularly a space-based research program on the Southern Indian Lake near Winnipeg. He was also offered necessary support for his attendance at professional conferences of interest to him. From Canada, Ade's career took him back to Nigeria. Just before he left Ottawa in February 1976, at the end of his CCRS fellowship program, he personally delivered a copy of a document he had prepared on remote sensing technology in the development of Nigeria to the Nigerian High Commissioner in Ottawa for onward transition to the Nigerian government in Lagos. On his return to Nigeria, he sought opportunities to advance the knowledge and use of remote sensing technology at his university and in other Nigerian academic institutions and appropriate government establishments. These include the National Council for Science and Technology, Science Association of Nigeria, Lake Kenji Research Institute, Basita Sugar Estate, Ogun State Water Corporation, as well as the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Africa in Addis Ababa. He sought to impress on them all the invaluable contributions of remote sensing to national development. Shortly after his return to Ife from Canada, he received in March 1976 an invitation from the federal government of Nigeria to serve as an advisor to the Nigerian delegation to the 13th session of the United Nations Scientific and Technical Subcommittee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space in Geneva, Switzerland. His contributions at that meeting led to a joint luncheon invitation from both the chief of OSAD, Professor Lubos Perek, and the United Nations expert on space applications, Mr. H. G. S. Murthy. The discussion that afternoon and subsequent communications between OSAD and the Nigerian government resulted in Ade's two-year secondment to the space applications section of OSAD as a remote sensing specialist beginning on July 24, 1977. On his arrival at the United Nations headquarters in New York, Ade found out that he was one of just four officers and two administrative assistants that constituted the staff of the Space Applications Section of OSAD, with the United Nations expert on space applications as the head of the section. Almost seven months later, he attended his first meeting of Corp Wars as a United Nations staff. At that time, the main function of the section was to carry out the mandate granted to it by the United Nations General Assembly on the recommendations of the United Nations Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space. Ade's first major activity at the United Nations was to plan, develop and execute the third United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization International Training Course on Remote Sensing Applications in Agriculture with emphasis on forestry. The course was held from the 15th of May to the 2nd of June 1978. On this occasion, we celebrate Dr. Ade Adigno I first met Dr. Abiodo when I was prepared to serve in the United Nations in Vienna. And I found him to be passionate in educating member states on the benefits of peaceful uses of outer space. On a personal level, we developed a very close working relationship. And even whenever he calls my house, 
Incidentally, my daughter will pick the phone and say, Dr. Abiodu. So they developed a very close grandfather, granddaughter relationship. As we celebrate Dr. Abiodu, my wife, Rose, and I wish Dr. Abiodu and his amiable wife, Auntie Judith, the remarkable location and best wishes. The United Nations General Assembly, at its 33rd session, decided that a second United Nations Conference on the Exploration and Peaceful Uses of Outer Space, Unispace 82, should be convened. Thereafter, Copwas agreed that Unispace 82 would be held from August 9th to 21st, 1982 with Austria as the host country, just as it did in 1968 for Unispace 68, and that OSAD will similarly serve as the premier support secretariat of the conference. In preparation for the upcoming 1982 conference, the then chief of the space applications section called a day for a discussion on what his views were on the future directions of UNSAP. Ade provided him with an internal memorandum on suggestions on future directions of the UN Space Applications Program. But by mid-1981, the incumbent chief of the Space Applications Section resigned his post. In order to keep the office agenda of the UN SAP on track, in June 1981, Ade Abiodun was appointed as the officer in charge of the Space Applications Section. Subsequently, on November 3, 1981, Adegun Ade Abiodun was appointed as the United Nations Expert on Space Applications and the Chief of the Space Applications Section. Ade and his staff then refined the proposal he had proposed in late 1980 as the future direction of the program and submitted same to Copwas for consideration during its Unispace 82 preparations. The Unispace 82 conference was held as planned, thereafter the UN General Assembly. In order to effectively translate the elements of the expanded mandates of the program into operational activities, the Space Applications section under a day's supervision, developed three major initiatives which were subsequently approved by Copwas and endorsed by the General Assembly. These were 1. The establishment of regional centers for space science and technology education in the developing countries. Today, these centers are operating in India from 1995, Nigeria from 1998, Morocco from 1998, Jordan from 2012, Brazil and Mexico, India and Latin America. 2. The United Nations initiative to develop a satellite-based cooperative information network called COPAIN received strong support from the European Space Agency and six West European countries. But with no support from the African beneficiaries, the program died a natural death. 3. The organization of a course series that was funded by the government of Sweden and hosted by Stockholm University from 1990 through 1998, except for 1991. Each course session lasted six weeks and focused on remote sensing education for university educators. While at the United Nations, Ade Abiodun also served in a variety of other capacities, including coordinator of the participation of the United Nations in the International Space Year, which happened in 1992. On the 30th of September 1999, Ade retired from the services of the United Nations. 
In early year 2000, Ade accepted to serve Nigeria in the administration of President Lucia Gumabasonjo as his senior special assistant on space science and technology. He saw his role as helping the nation to embark on a long-term space program that would ensure that space played a significant and pivotal role in Nigeria's development agenda. By the time Ade assumed office in Abuja, Nigeria had already started a Nigerian satellite project with a singular focus of purchasing Nigeria's Sat-1 Earth Observation Satellite. Ade did not believe this to be a viable approach for the space program in Nigeria or for any developing country. He presented the same to the president and others with all reasonable arguments against going forward with the satellite project, but it appeared that all the hands on the deck were in favor of the Nigeria Sat-1 ever before he even joined the administration. Ade Abiodu believed he had only one choice left. He formally requested the then president of Nigeria, His Excellency Olusegun Obasanjo, in writing to be excused from being associated with the Nigeria Sat-1 project. Ade, as the senior special assistant on space, science and technology, invited the support of 24 Nigerians that were knowledgeable in the different fields of space, science and technology. The experts that Ade Abiodun brought in produced a document titled Nigeria's Space Programme a blueprint for scientific and technological development. The document was presented to President Obasanjo. In January 2000, the incumbent Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Kofi Annan, appointed Ade Abiodun as a member of the College of Commissioners of the United Nations Monitoring, Verification and Inspection Commission on Iraq. UN MOVIC. UN MOVIC was established to provide the United Nations authoritative information needed to disarm Iraq of its weapons of mass destruction and to operate a system of ongoing monitoring and verification to check Iraq's compliance with its obligations not to reacquire the same weapons prohibited to it by the Security Council. UN MOVIC never found any operative weapons of mass destruction in Iraq and its inspectors were withdrawn in March 2003. UN MOVIC was decommissioned in 2007. While at the United Nations, Ade Abiodo also served in a variety of other capacities, including the following. 1. Secretary to Committee 2 of Unit Space 82 in 1982. 2. Coordinator of the Participation of the United Nations in the International Space Year, 1992. 3. Organizer, globally, from May 1998 through January 1999 of four Unispace 3 regional preparatory conferences that were mandated by the General Assembly. 4. Coordinator, from June 1998 to July 1999 of 13 Unispace 3 background papers. 5. Secretary to the Ad Hoc Drafting Group of Unispace 3 Preparatory Committee and he was also the Secretary to Committee 2 of Unispace 3 in July 1999. Hello, my name is Kajo Vishroge. I'm with the European Space Agency ESA and I'm the President of the International Institute of Space Law. Please receive my congratulations for naming this lecture in honor of Dr. Adigun Ade Abiodun, who has been a leader for African space endeavors for so many decades. I am privileged to know Dr. Abiodun for almost 30 years, and I can assure you that he was one of the personalities who impressed me most throughout the past decades. I met Ade in the early 1990s when I was a young delegate to UN COPFUAS and responsible for my country's engagement in the UN Space Applications Program. This program was shaped by Adi in a way that was truly formidable. 
during the many years of his lead, it was tremendously extended and it dramatically increased the direct benefit for so many developing countries, many of them now space actors with their own satellites and a broad utilization of space applications. Further to this strong impact, Adi has been a fantastic diplomat, be it in his role as chair of UN Corpus, be it as founder and initiator of joint and pan-African space policies and activities. I owed him much during my term as chair of the UN Corpus Legal Subcommittee and as the president of the International Institute of Space Law, IISL, where he provided me with valuable advice and support liaising and working with African institutions and personalities. I am proud of the long-lasting friendship with Dr. Abiodun, an outstanding leader for the African continent and globally. Congratulations again to the African Space Leadership Institute to name the lecture in his honor. Thank you. Dear Abidjun, dear participants, this is a message from Rome on the occasion of the public lecture in honor of Dr. Adijun Ade Abiudun, delivered by Maslan Ottman, to whom I also convey my most sincere regards. I have greatly appreciated the invitation of the African Space Leadership Institute to record a tribute. My relationship with Abdijun dates back in time because we were both acting within the United Nations organs dealing with space governance. However, our personal and professional relationship touched its apex when he was elected chairman of the UN Committee on the Peaceful Use of Outer Space in June 2004 and carried out this function during the biennium 2004-2006. Thanks to his competence and strong leadership, he gave a renewed input to the committee's work. I remember his first statement as chairman when he stressed on the urgent need to move forward the sustainability of outer space activities and identify new areas for the application of space technologies for sustainable development globally. Needless to say that his vision has been always directed towards emerging space countries and in particular those of the African region. But I must also underline how open-minded and looking forward was his approach to outer space, including my sector, space law. In fact, I deeply appreciated his leadership, having had the chance to be elected myself chairman of the COPOS Legal Subcommittee for the same biennium 2004-2006. We worked in strict cooperation and pursued common intents. Furthermore, he engaged in the organization of the UN Nigeria Workshop on Space Law on the topic of meeting international responsibilities and addressing domestic needs. Held in Abuja in November 2005, which was a great success. I appreciated then the Adijun skills in ensuring a friendly and warm environment for all participants in his country during the official meetings and the most joyful occasions of relax. It is not easy to encapsulate in a recorded message all what I wanted to say, but in a nutshell I would say, dear Abijun, be sure of my unfailing feeling of friendship and esteem. Congratulations. Ciao. Adia Biodo worked with like-minded professionals and colleagues and interested partners around the world to establish a number of space-related organizations and institutions, as well as contribute to their activities. These include 1. In 1986, and at the invitation of the Executive Director of ECA and the Center's Director, Adi Abiodun led the team of experts that developed the postgraduate program on remote sensing and geographical information systems for the ECA Regional Center for Aerospace Surveys, Rectas, in Ileife, Nigeria. 2. He served as member of COSPAS panel 
on space research in developing countries from 1982 to 1999 and ISPRS Working Group on Extraterrestrial Mapping of the ISPRS from 1988 to 1999 and C, COS ISPRS International Policy Study Panel. Three, at the invitation of the Executive Secretary of the ECA in Addis Ababa, he led from July 25 to July 31, 1990, a three-man fact-finding mission that reorganized the administrative structure of the Regional Center for Services in Surveying, Mapping and Remote Sensing RCSSMRS, in Nairobi, Kenya. 4. He contributed to the development of the 1990 Summer Projects, that is, the International Programs for Earth Observation, of the International Space University Summer Program, Strasbourg, France. 5. He initiated, in collaboration with other like-minded African professionals, the establishment of the African Association of Remote Sensing of the Environment, AARSE, in Colorado Springs, Colorado, in 1992. 6. He contributed to the 1992 to 1994 preparatory work that led to the establishment of the Asia Pacific Satellite Communications Council, APSCC, in Seoul, Korea, in October. 1994. 7. He presented an initiative at the 1996 United Nations Conference on Sustainable Development held in Pretoria, South Africa that subsequently led to the establishment of the African Space Leadership Conference, ASLC. ASLC was eventually established and inaugurated in Abuja, Nigeria in June 2005. 8. He collaborated through UNOSA with the establishment of the Space Generation Advisory Council in 1999 and therefore served as one of its board members. 9. He has been a long-term member of the Space Week International Association and served as chairman of its board of directors October 2001 to October 2004. 10. He served as one of the 20 global panelists that explored in February 2006 space and humans in the next 1,000 years for the foundation of the future, Bellevue State of Washington. 11. He served as a member of the Association of Space Explorers Panel on the Mitigation of Asteroids' Impacts from 2007 to 2008. 12. He invited participants at Space Vista Workshop held in Strasbourg, France in January 2014 and sponsored by U.S. Air Force and International Space University. 13. He served as a member of the African Union Space Working Group. 14. He founded the African Space Foundation and he is a co-founder of the African Space Leadership Institute. It is my pleasure to tell you the story of my meeting with Adigon Ade Abudun. That is also, in a sense, the story or part of the story of Africa going to space. I first met with Professor Ade, as I like to call him, at the start Conference in Addis Ababa in October 2012. But with the current chair of the uh, CEO of SANSA, Mr. Humbula Mado. Professor Ade was straightforward and he explained to me the plant biology that I am how space was important to Africa and how I can really use my seat as the head of science and technology at the African Union Commission to advance <coughs> this African space initiative. I listened to him very carefully and once I got back to my office, I started discussing with my team on how we can move the space initiative forward. This led to prioritization and coordination within the African Union Commission for the implementation of the GMES and Africa program, and also through AMCOS 2012 in Congo Brazzaville, the ministers of science and technology empowered the African Union Commission to set up the space working group led by Professor Val Musami. The outcome of the work, you know it, has members of 
space, African space community with the key element of the African space program, meaning the African space policy and strategy and the African space agency are on the ground by the time I retired from the African Union Commission in early 2022. It is to tell you how Professor Ade contributed in accelerating the journey of Africa to space, which the able colleagues at the African Union Commission, notably Dr. Tijan Watara, are really working hard to champion. I am therefore very grateful to Professor Ade for his mentorship and his persistent push to achieve the goals set for the African Space Program as embodied in these foundations document. In this meeting and in all subsequent encounters with Professor Adi, he always made me feel at home. He made me feel more important and more empowered, which are usually not part of my characters. I cannot thank Professor Adi enough for his contribution in the conception of the African Space Program and his mentorship. This is part of his legacy and I will always remember it. I wish you well, Professor Ade, and I want to thank you all for listening. My name is Bruce Forster. I was a professor of satellite remote sensing at the University of New South Wales in Sydney and the Australian delegate to the Asian Association on Remote Sensing. My wife, Jan and I have known Dr. Abi Odun for many years, both personally and professionally, and we are delighted that he is being honoured by the African Space Institute for his work throughout the world over many, many years. Adi has made a tremendous contribution to satellite remote sensing, Earth observation and the peaceful use of outer space, firstly through his foundation of the African Space Foundation and over many, many years his work with the United Nations. Adi has always seemed to be very busy, never stopping, always on the go. But there is another side. When my wife and I hosted him in Sydney, we decided to take him to the famous Sydney Opera House to see a grand opera. But after days of flying, jet lag finally caught up with him and he fell asleep. So we let him sleep quietly and peacefully through the remaining performance and woke him at the end and got him home back to his hotel safe and sound. Dr. Abidun is a great African, a world leader, but more importantly, a great human being who is charming, intelligent, always full of fun, and we both admire him very much and feel honored to be his friend. Thank you. Throughout his career and immediately thereafter, Ade continued to research, lecture, and publish in his chosen field of interest and much more. Most of these, including joint papers, are available online via LinkedIn, ResearchGate, and Academia.edu.